Hello, my friends. May the Holy Spirit open the understanding of all of you to understand His Holy Word and to have ears to hear His voice and obey it because God gave you, He gave me as well, the right to choose good or evil, to obey or to disobey His Word. We have this power. I haven't come, neither have you. None of us came into this world because we chose. No, I didn't choose to come into this world. However, thank God, by His Word, the Holy Scriptures, I have the right to choose, to decide my destination and determine what I want and receive it. Because this is the faith that the Holy Spirit gives to each person who believes in His Word and obeys His Word. You don't need to feel in order to obey. You just have to think in order to obey. For example, you work in a certain place and you have the obligation to work because if you don't work, you are going to be fired, isn't it? That's how it is. So sometimes you're going to go to work without feeling like it at all. You feel sad, discouraged, but you have to go. Why? Because if you don't work, you lose your job. Somebody else will take your place. So you work. And the same thing is concerning the Word of God. We don't have to feel in order to apply it in our lives, to exercise our faith, to obey. No, we only have to obey. That's it. I remember when I used to work outside, when I lived working and fighting for the daily bread, running from one side to another like a popcorn, jumping from a branch to another. I didn't feel like it. But in the morning, I would get up early, very early, because I had my obligations. I had my responsibilities. If I didn't go to work, then I wouldn't bring the daily bread to the house. So I had to work, whether I felt like it or not, whether I had courage, motivation, if I was sad, it didn't matter. I didn't want to lose the job. I didn't want to lose the opportunity to do something and get a salary in return. The same thing is concerning the Word of God. You don't feel like obeying it. However, you think. God gave you the ability to think. And this ability gives you the power to obey whether you feel like it or not, isn't it? It only depends on you. <laughs> this is easy to understand. Come on, it's not possible. And yesterday, we were speaking about the verse that in Deuteronomy 28, you can find this fifth book of the Old Testament. You open your Bible and it's there, Deuteronomy and there you will find in chapter 28 when God places at the disposal of each of us its two options, to obey and to disobey. With obedience comes 13 blessings promised by God. 13, 13 or 14 blessings promised by God. However, he says like this there, if you do not obey my word, do you know how many curses, how many curses will come because of disobedience? My goodness. It's 53 
verses that carry a curse. 53 verses that carry a curse and they are divided because he speaks. Pay attention there. Pay attention. He says here like this. In one of the verses he says, the Lord will send on you cursing. That's it. Only by that, only by that here, you will know that the person will be cursed. Cursed here on earth. It doesn't matter if they have high educational level, if they have money or not, if they're going to have a great inheritance from their parents. It doesn't matter. They will be cursed because God determined that. It's written here. The Lord will send on you cursing. Only one verse here. Confusion. Cursing. And then confusion. A confused mind. And rebuke in all that you set your hand to do. Until you are destroyed. And until you perish quickly. Because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me. Of course, that here God was talking to his people, the children of Israel. And in reality, this has been happening. Everybody can see that. Everybody. This here, perhaps you say like this, but Bishop, what do I have to do with this? I am not a Jew, I'm not an Israelite. Ah, my friend, for sure you have Jewish blood in you. For sure, for sure, you can be sure of that. Perhaps you don't know that, but if you do a DNA test, you are going to find out that, how can I say, there is a connection between you and the Israelites. And this is the reason why the whole world is being destroyed. The chaos and wars and curses and sicknesses, infirmities, in these 53 verses here of curses, they divide themselves, meaning the curses multiply themselves two, three, four times more. You just have to read it. It's too long. I can't read it here. But read there. Deuteronomy chapter 28 that God places the curse and the blessing before us. When the children of Israel finally arrived in the promised land, pay attention, God determined two mounts, two mounts, Mount Gerizim and Mount Ebal. Mount Gerizim was the mount of the blessing, and Mount Ebal was the mount of the curse. Pay attention, two mounts. If memory doesn't fail me, this is the determination, or vice versa. Because I don't have the text here to double check, so I might be making a mistake. Yet, two mounts were placed there, Gerizim and Ebal. Gerizim, the blessing, and Ebal, the curse. And those mountains are there up until today. And I've been there. I went there and I saw with my own eyes. And Mount Gerizim is prosperous, it's beautiful, has flowers, and there's houses there, it's nice, there's a garden. But Mount Ebal is cursed. It's cursed. There is nothing there, absolutely nothing. The mounts are next to one another, close to one another. But one is prosperous and the other one is cursed. God said, see, look at these mounts. Look at these mounts because they will be witnesses that I've promised to you the blessing. And if you obeyed my word, if you obey my word, you will be like Mount Gerizim. Now, if you disobey, look here, you are going to be like Mount Ebal. Dried. There is nothing there. And I only saw there electric towers 
on, on Mount Ebal, the things for the internet and so on. And nothing else, zero. Therefore, my friend, the blessing and the curse are at your disposal, our disposal. Whoever thinks, obeys. Whoever does not think, disobeys. And then a religious person comes and says, oh, but this is just in the law. No, nothing to do with this. What God said, He said. He said it. The word that comes out of my mouth will not return to me void. But it will be accomplished as I please. Therefore, my friend, the word of God is God. It is God in spirit which opens the eyes, the understanding of people. Remember that Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. So you who are suffering, groaning, perishing with an infirmity, with misery, poverty, unemployment, debt, and so on. You who are a person who is going badly in your love life, in your family, Perhaps all of your life is a disgrace. But if you put this word to the test, if you put it to the test, make, make a test with God. Test the word of God. Test it. How am I going to test it, Bishop? By obeying it. Start obeying it. The first thing you have to do, pay attention, is to be faithful in your tithe, in your first fruits. Be faithful in the first fruits. Take the first 10% of your income, of what you earn, even if it's 10p, it doesn't matter. Take the first 10p, place it on the altar, because this first 10p will show that you are determined to obey. It will show that you are inclined towards obeying the Word of God, and then God will start blessing you right away. In the same day, you are going to see. In the same day, you are going to see how things are going to happen. Why? It's not because God needs the money or that He, he lives after money. No. This is a matter of honor. You honor the one and only the one who truly is worthy of all the honor, of all the glory, and all the adoration, and all the exaltation. So many religious people go to church and then they raise up their hands and pray, Hallelujah here, Hallelujah there, but they are disobedient in regards to the first fruit. And then what happens? They are defeated Christians. Christians who are lukewarm. Believers who are ashamed to the Lord Jesus Christ because they give a really bad testimony. Believers who inside of the church, they pray, they worship, and etc. But when they are outside of the church, they lie, they commit adultery. They do everything that is not good. And, and this is the truth. And these believers are confined to all these curses. You can check. Make a test. You know believers. You know Christians. And please, I'm not here judging anybody. I'm just bringing up a reality that everybody sees. Everyone sees it. The misery, the curse in the life of that person. And how many people say like this, Oh, I will never be a believer. I will never go to church. Why? Because of the bad testimony that some Christians that one day said they had an encounter with God. They said one day they were delivered from demons. One day they were healed and blessed and this and that and the other. But they they convinced themselves and they are living with a foot here, another one there, trying to conciliate things. 
This is the reality. I know what it is because I know many who are in this situation, family members who are in this situation. I can say this because I know, I know personally people, unfortunately, and what is the point of us saying anything? There's no point. The more we say, the more death they, be, they become because they are stubborn and they brag about the years they have they say, you know, I served Jesus for many years. And that's when false prophets are born, deceivers are born, prophetesses, and etc., etc., etc. So many people, unfortunately, disgracefully, who carry a huge Bible under their arm, they carry within themselves as well a demon, a spirit of deceit. And these people instead of sanctifying the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, they bring shame to the name of our Lord Jesus. This is the reality. It was the Jews that Jesus met when he came here. The Jews. And to them, Jesus said, Look, Jews are the religious, not the Israelites, the Jews. The Jews are the religious ones that he said to them like this, you say that you are Abraham's descendants. Yes, it's true. You are descendants of Abraham, but not children of Abraham. Children, which means they are in the faith of Abraham, faith in the God of Abraham. So many people carry the Bible under their arm. They say, I'm a Christian, I'm this, I'm that, I'm from the church A, B, or C, even the universal church as well. But these people, in reality, are just descendants. They have nothing to do with the blessings promised to the children of Abraham. Children in the faith of Abraham. I know, Jesus said, that you are Abraham's descendants, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. My word has no place in you. That's why you want to kill me. That's why you persecute me. That's why you hate me. That's why I am not accepted amongst yourselves. I came to you, but you did not accept me. And there are people, unfortunately, disgracefully, with a heavy heart, I say this, Perhaps you are never going to hear this from a pastor, from a bishop, or on a spiritual authority, because they don't say these things not to hurt people, because they don't want to lose members from the church. They don't want to lose their tithe, their offerings. But I don't care if you want to be a tither or not. If you are faithful tither, offering giver, amen. If not, what can I do? We are not going to stop developing the work that God commanded us to do. We are going to go on. We are going to break through. You can be sure of that, my friend. Whether you are or not faithful to God, I am only saying this for your own good, in order for you, you to understand that what will change your life is your obedience to the Word of God. Is it so difficult to understand this? Is it so difficult? Is it impossible to understand this? It's written here. He says clearly, pay attention. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not be beneath. If, if you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today, and are careful to observe them, so you shall not turn aside from any, any of the words which I command you to, this day, to the right or to the left, to go after all the gods, to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if you don't obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you, 
and overtake you. So it means that by obedience, the blessings run after us, overtake us. By disobedience, the curses overtake us. So what are you going to do? What is the action of faith you're going to take? It doesn't matter if you are a Catholic, a believer, an evangelical, a spiritist, a Jew, a Muslim. It doesn't matter if you are a Hindu. Whatever your religion is, if you are a good guy, a criminal, a sinner, a saint, it does not matter. What matters is the following. If you obey the word of God, you are going to be blessed. If you do not obey it, you are going to be cursed. This is it. Those who think, of course, will obey it. Those who don't, will be left behind. And it's like I said in the beginning here. I would leave the house sometimes in the morning, early in the morning, and I didn't want to go to work. The desire was to stay in bed, especially when it was raining nicely outside. You, you know what I mean. Oh, come on, I have to go to work. But I would go. Why? Because the daily bread depended on that work. I knew it. If I missed work, they would deduct from my income and I was going to miss that at the end of the month. So I had to be obedient. I had to be careful. I had to do something that was going contrary to my will and my heart. However, why? Because I was responsible. I had commitments and I could not in any way fail with my commitments. So I would obey because I had to obey. Otherwise, I would suffer the consequences. So don't listen to your heart, to your feelings, to your will to do this or not. Obedience is not a feeling. It is an action of faith. You obey because you know that you are going to receive the benefits of obedience. If you don't obey, it's because you are lazy, you're sluggish, sluggish, and you want things to happen in a magical way in your life. And then what happens? You are there hurting yourself day after day after day. That's the reality. May God bless you. I won't say anything anymore because there is an anger growing inside of me now against the rebellion of some people because I've seen this. I've seen a whole lot of it every single day, unfortunately. But what can I do? Each person has their own mind and each person will make their own decision. I've made my choice and I'm here preaching, teaching, giving direction, giving the direction, the instructions, giving the secret of success. The secret of success is this. May God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow. And let's honor our Lord today in all the work where there is a universal church. You can go there to honor the Lord. May God bless you in Jesus' name. Or in your own church as well, your own denomination, okay? God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen.